Hi, hope you had a great day. So in continuation to yesterday's video, now that we understand how bad acidosis is for the human body, how bad it is to have an acidic body when it comes to disease, when it comes to looking at the healing of certain diseases that we have, it's now time for us to understand <clears throat> how important it is to keep your body alkaline, to keep your blood alkaline, to keep your urine alkaline. Although the human body has its natural self-defense mechanism and its natural way of balancing pH, because of the world that we live in today, the pollution that we breed in, the pesticides in our food, the access to junk food and hidden sugars and so many of the processed and manufactured foods, even though we try to eat a healthy diet, we're constantly trying to reduce the amount of acidity in the human body. So the first thing that we need to understand today is how can we make our body alkaline? It's not about drinking lemon water throughout the day. It's far beyond that. The first thing is we never, we never need a reason to eat well. We shouldn't have to have a reason to eat well. I'm going to start eating well because I want to lose weight. I'm going to start eating well because I don't want to fall sick. I'm going to start eating well because I'm sick and I want to get better. We need to eat well because that's what the survival of the human body depends on. It's as simple as that. When we put the right food in the human body, the human body behaves the right way. And when we put the wrong food in the human body, that's when we have all the issues of hormonal imbalances and the human body doesn't behave in a way to support your looks, to support the way you feel and support the way you live. So let's straight away get into the importance of a diet, especially when you're on medication. Be it chemo, be it radiation, be it insulin, be it cardiovascular medication, diabetes, high, high blood pressure, whatever it is. If you've ever noticed that in that long prescription list that you get, there's usually an antacid in most prescription lists. Why will, the, why will your doctor put an antacid in your medicine prescription list? Because he or she is aware that the side effects of certain medications makes your body acidic. The very fact that your medication is making you acidic means that you are depleting your vital organs, your cells and tissues of calcium, of magnesium, of sodium, of potassium and several other trace minerals like selenium and zinc which plays very, very vital roles in the functioning of the human body. So now, if your medication or your conventional treatment is making you acidic, just taking an antacid and treating the symptom and getting relief is still not helping you prevent the onset of another complication or a disease, which is why whenever you're under any treatment or on any medication, the first thing that you need to do is change the way you eat, change your diet. Your diet has to become more alkaline to support the acid forming side effects of the medication that you're on. And there is no excuse for this. Like I said, you don't need an excuse. You don't have to wait to get onto medication to change your diet. You gotta change your diet every day so that you can wake out of your wake up and get out of your bed with energy and not drag yourself to the kitchen to have your first cup of coffee, which only stimulates your brain and never wakes up the human body. It's extremely, extremely important for us to understand that anyone on medication, anyone suffering through cancer, going through radiation, any medication needs to have a diet that is rich in alkaline foods. And now we're going to talk about how you can make your diet alkaline. Now most of you would have already Googled last night and checked the most alkaline forming foods, the most acid forming foods, and you'll find that a lot of really good foods are acid forming. But I said it is not about the pH level of the food because every food expresses itself differently. Like lemon is one of the most acidic foods, but when you digest it, it becomes one of the most alkaline foods in the body, which makes it one of the best remedies for handling acidity, reflux, and heartburn when you have it. It suits most people, and of course, some people it doesn't suit. Some people choose to eat cucumber or raw carrot, and that takes care of their acidity immediately. For some people, milk works, and for some people, milk causes more acidity. So the whole idea is, you don't just look at the foods to take away acidity, you look at your lifestyle and your diet. When you choose to make your diet 60 to 80% alkaline, which is raw and the balance of it is cooked because cooked food is mainly acid forming. So for example, if you start off every meal with some raw vegetables like carrots or beetroots or cucumbers or radish, or you do a salad or you do a vegetable juice, you are 
you are putting raw enzymes into your body which will help you with digestion and maintain an alkaline pH of the human body. But if you start all of your meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner, all of it is cooked food, it is highly acid forming and you maintain an acidic level in the human body. So it's really simple. Fruits, raw vegetables, raw nuts and seeds, right from your almonds to your walnuts which are soaked, your pumpkin seeds, all of your raw foods even though Google may show you some of them are acid forming, you now understand that it behaves differently post digestion. So when you get all of these raw foods in your diet, lemon water included, garlic is alkaline as well and so is ginger and so is onion. So when you have all raw foods, let's keep it simple because you don't want to have a list of all these foods that make you alkaline. You want to follow the simple process of how much, is, how much of raw food can I have in my diet. Now, many people who are going through diseases like cancer will say, well, my doctor doesn't allow me to have raw, and for the right reasons, because of pesticides, because of your immunity dipping if you have the wrong pesticides getting into your body. But remember, there are fruits and vegetables which can be peeled. So when you peel a beetroot, when you peel a pumpkin, when you peel a carrot, when you peel a cucumber, all the pesticides is on the outside. So you can still eat these fruits and vegetables in the raw form because that's what you need, especially when you're going through a harsh treatment like chemo or radiation. Your body is so acidic, which is why people who are going through cancer have the discoloration in their skin. They have this constant level of fatigue and low energy. They have this cramping in their bones and in their muscles and their calves and they're constantly, constantly tired. That's because their bodies are so acidic. So here you are trying to remove a cancer using conventional treatment and here you are maintaining a terrain in the human body which is acidic, which is the exact breeding ground that your cancer cells need, which is why it is so important. You need chemo, you need radiation, you need medication. Take it, but do it the right way by changing your diet, by adding more alkaline forming foods. And that's why it breaks my heart and it angers me when I walk into a hospital and I see patients going through these treatments being fed white sugar, milk, white bread and all of this stuff which is so acid forming. So here you are in a hospital to get healed. And here you are being fed the foods which is going to compromise your healing and contradict the treatment that you're going through. So it's as simple as that. Now a lot of people overdo it on lemon water. You need to understand, like I said yesterday, the body also needs acidic levels for the digestion of food. The pH level of your stomach is somewhere between 3 to 3.5, which is highly acidic and you need it to break down and digest your food the right way. So people who don't have the right amount of stomach acids actually have digestion issues as well, bloating, flatulence, and acidity the right way. So you don't want to be drinking water while you eat your meals. You don't want to be drinking lemon water immediately after your meal. If you want to have lemon water, have it 30 to 45 minutes after your meal. So your digestion can finish in the acidic medium, and then later you can add the alkaline water to your system through your lemon water 30 to 40 minutes after your digestion has happened. So now you're at, a, you're at a ways to make your body alkaline and stay alkaline because it is so important. There are two things. There are two things which can change the world of healthcare today. I don't call it healthcare, I call it sick care because people are getting sicker and sicker. There are two things, moving from acidic to alkaline and banishing constipation from your life because if you are constipated and there are so many people who are constipated and right now there is a direct correlation between constipation and almost every cancer you don't you don't need research to tell you this it's common sense okay if you if you keep stools and fecal matter in your colon it's supposed to be out of your system but if you keep it in your system because you're constipated you are creating toxic gases and toxic waste which can start the mutation of cells. You are backing estrogen back into your liver and then into your blood and literally starting a cycle that can feed cancer cells. It is so important to banish constipation out of your life. The more constipated you are, the more acidic you are. And why? Because toxic waste makes your blood more acidic. So number one, if you are constipated, please make sure you're drinking the right amount of water, the right quality of water, and you have the right uh, quality and quantity of fiber again. If you are achieving 60 to 80 percent raw, you will automatically get the amount of fiber that you need without the dependency on laxatives and quick fix methods 
to pass a bowel movement every day. If you have the right amount of water as well in your body, so many people are dehydrated, so many. Just because you work or live in an air-conditioned environment and you don't feel thirsty doesn't mean that the body doesn't require water. It doesn't mean that the body is not getting dehydrated. So number one, make sure you are hydrated. We spoke about the body being 70 to 75 percent of water, which means every function in your body has the requirement of water to perform its function in the right way. So water, the second is raw, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, lemon water, okay, your right, the right amount of probiotics, everything that's raw which will support the growth and the maintenance and detoxification of the human body. You do not need to detoxify if you have raw food in the right quality going into your body. What happens when you go to detox centers and retreats? They feed you juice, salads and fruits for the first 10 and 15 days and you feel great, you lose weight, you get that glow in your skin. That's raw food working at its best for you. You leave the retreat, you leave the detox center, you come back to your life, you start eating all of your outside food, your cooked food again, and what happens? Your health changes. That's enough of proof to show you the difference between an acidic body and an alkaline body. The second point that we have is exercise because we have to understand that it is all about the circulation of your blood. We understood yesterday how important it is for your blood to circulate the right way. So many people do their hemoglobin test. Every, every three to six months, and they have high hemoglobin levels, but yet they have constant fatigue throughout the day. That's a piece of paper telling you how much of hemoglobin you have in your body. It is not telling you how your hemoglobin is being utilized in the human body, which is why we have to listen to biofeedback that our body gives you better than any report in the world. So let's understand what is the function of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin carries oxygen from your lungs to all those 32 trillion cells in the human body, energizing your cells and giving it everything it needs for you to stay healthy and energized. And hemoglobin also carries the carbon dioxide waste from those cells and tissues back to your lungs so that you can exhale it. That is the function of hemoglobin and for that you need the right amount of circulation in your body. Now, hemoglobin to work in the right way in your body requires a slightly alkaline level of your blood. So if your blood is acidic, hemoglobin is not working the way you think it should be working, even if your levels are showing well in your report. But if your blood is alkaline, hemoglobin will work efficiently, carrying oxygen to your cells and removing carbon dioxide out of your body. So that's about hemoglobin. Let's talk about carbon dioxide in the human body. Right now, everyone who's watching, pause and observe the way you're breathing. Are you breathing to your full capacity? And most of us will say no. So now, if I'm breathing in a shallow manner, there are two things that ha that's happening. I'm sending less oxygen to my cells and I'm taking away less carbon dioxide out of my body because I'm shallow breathing. So if my inhale is short, I, I don't have the right amount of oxygen going to all of my cells. And oxygen has an alkaline effect on your blood. But worse than that is because I'm shallow breathing, my exhale is also short. I'm keeping carbon dioxide in my cells and in my body. And the more carbon dioxide you have in your blood, the more acidic your blood is. Which is why when you see patients who have low SpO2 levels and higher concentrations of carbon dioxide in their blood, they're dizzy, they're sleepy, they have blackouts. But the moment their SpO2 levels go up, their oxygen levels go up, you find that their energy levels come back, the dizziness, the dizziness disappears. That's exactly how important breathing is when it comes to your acidic and alkaline levels. And the human body is so brilliantly designed that we don't have to run and find a raw cucumber or a raw carrot or a glass of lemon water when we feel acidic. What we need to do is breathe, breathe deep, long inhales, longer exhales. So you use that one inexpensive and free commodity and the most underutilized commodity on this planet, oxygen. If we only knew how powerful oxygen is, we would use it the right way. And that is why pranayama makes you feel so good. Pranayama trains your body to utilize oxygen the right way and expel carbon dioxide the right way. So the next time you're acidic, all you need to really do, if you have no access to all of these raw and alkaline foods, sit with your back straight and inhale and long exhales. And you will find that you get relief from even the most severe acidity that you may have. So it's important that we look at the way that we breathe as well. So that's what we need to do to stay alkaline, your breath, your oxygen. 
your exercise, blood circulation, the foods that you eat. What I like to do if I'm not intermittent fasting, I like to be raw right up to lunch. So it could be almond milk, it could be dates, it could be my fruits, it could be a vegetable juice, it could be nuts, it could be seeds, it could be unheated and unpasteurized honey. And I would have that right up to lunchtime. That's my breakfast. It keeps me going right up to lunch. So I'm getting half of my day to be entirely raw. I'll start off with raw cucumber, raw salad. Before my lunch, before my dinner, it would be a vegetable juice. So I'm trying to be 80% raw. And I will have cooked food because I do want my lentils. I do want my beans. I do want my grains as well. And I do want some amount of cooked vegetable in my diet as well. But I'm making sure that 80 to 90% of it is raw and alkaline. And that's all you need to do. So you don't need a nutritionist to make a diet plan that is alkaline for you. You now have the knowledge to do it yourself. So if you're on medication, if you're going on, undergoing any treatment, if you're just looking at feeling better, feeling good about yourself, it's a horrible feeling if you go through the day with low energy. It's a fantastic feeling when you wake out of bed full of energy and you go to bed sleepy and tired at night. That can all happen if you maintain an alkaline level in your body. So I think that's about it for today. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. It is all about acidity in the human body. Make yourself alkaline and that glow that you've lost in your face will come back naturally. No cream in the world will give you a glow that will last you for more than two to three hours, which is why you've got to keep on putting creams every day. But if you change the way you eat and you put the right nutrition in, that, in your body, that glow is going to come naturally and stay on your face throughout the day. And that's how the human body works. That's how nature works. Have a good night, everyone. Take care.